And now we have Ariados. This alarming arachnid has been around since the onset of Generation 2, where it evolved out of the small yet sinister Spinarak that popped up in the early stages of Pokemon Gold and Silver. It was also wielded by Elite Four Koga, who utilized the potentially terrifying combination of Spiderweb and Baton Pass. Who knew he was such a competitive guru? Ariados' design inspiration is quite interesting as well, drawing upon several different types of spiders as well as Ariadne from Greek mythology, if you check out his Bulbapedia page. Finally, it is widely suspected that Ariados is the spider responsible for bestowing superpowers upon one Peter Parker. Although which Peter Parker, that's left up for debate. Today, we will be examining if Ariados' web-weaving ways were warranted in the competitive scene, or if it got lost in the labyrinth of that same scene. And so, we ask, how good was Ariados actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Given that spiders are incredibly strong, being able to lift well around 170 times their own weight, and shoot webs made of silk stronger than steel, it is somewhat puzzling that Ariados possesses an attack stat of 90, which is lower than that of Parasect and Sea King. 90 is still a decent attack stat, but going a little higher might have been thematically appropriate, Game Freak. Anomaly aside, Ariados could not muster any semblance of a niche in Gen 2 OU. Its non-attack stats were absolutely miserable, and while Spider Web and Baton Pass was a fairly unique combination, it was entirely outclassed at this trap passing strategy by the thoroughly superior Mean Look Umbreon, who possessed excellent defensive utility, standing in stark contrast to Ariados, who possessed no such utility as a result of its abysmal bulk. As if that wasn't bad enough, it was painfully slow. It wasn't able to eke out a role among the lower power level of UU or even NU either. It just couldn't withstand neutral attacks at all, and its typing plagued it with a lack of resistance to common attacks. It wasn't completely unviable or anything. However, there was a reason nobody actually used it in serious games. It was one of those Pokemon you could technically justify some theoretical niche for it if you squinted hard enough, but you didn't want to actually use it because you knew it was actually bad. Alas, awful, appalling, abject Ariados. Advanced Ariados arrived with a few new tools in tow. It received the decent bug stab in Signal Beam, which meant in theory it could threaten the psychic types that would otherwise prey on its poison typing. This was more than a little idealistic, but it at least was something. In a similar vein, Ariados also received two decent abilities in Insomnia and Swarm. Being immune to sleep or boosting its bug stab would be nice if it made Ariados harder to deal with, but it didn't. Its stats were simply too poor, especially since the third generation introduced split EVs, forcing Ariados to choose between being even frailer or even slower than it had been prior. This meant that pulling off a successful spider web trap pass was now downright impossible. At least it hit harder now, especially since its stabs could be powered up further by choice ban. However, thanks to its awful speed and bulk, as well as power that was decent at best, it was more or less the worst choice bander you could use, even all the way down in Enu. Thus, Ariados was once more entirely unusable in Generation 3. The fourth generation was a mixed bag for our arachnid ally. The new physical special split meant both of its stabs lost base power in the transition from sludge bomb to poison jab and signal beam to bug bite. Furthermore, the addition of the ever-present stealth rock managed to make Ariados even more defensively inept than it had been before. However, Ariados also received a few highly useful moves in generation four, a terrific new entry hazard, toxic spikes, and priority options in shadow sneak and sucker punch. Now, this wasn't enough for it to develop any sort of niche even down in NU, because if one wanted Toxic Spice, they'd just use Needle Queen, and Toxic Spikes weren't exactly good, seeing how the incredibly popular Skunk Tank absorbed them upon entry. Ariados also remained far too slow and frail to ever pull off a safe spiderweb pass. However, the stars aligned perfectly because these new traits in conjunction with its insomnia ability were enough to gift Ariados a niche in Ubers. A small niche, but a niche nonetheless. It found its calling in the hyper-specialized department of DPP Ubers that was the lead metagame, which was dominated by two blazing fast leads in particular. The hazard stacking Deoxys Speed, which is the Pokemon that defined the entire lead metagame, and the sleep-inducing Darkrai. Ariados limited Deoxys Speed to one layer of hazards with the combination of Bug Bite and Shadow Snake while maintaining its Focus Sash. It could also potentially snipe a Deoxys attempting to flee from Shadow Snake by slotting Pursuit into its last move slot. Now this was nice, but what was so big about Ariados maintaining its Focus Sash? What made it better than, say, Lumberry Scizor? Scizor could pull identical tricks against Deoxys Speed while actually beating Darkrai one-on-one. -on -one. Since turns out, Ariados was too weak for Bug Bite and Priority to finish Darkrai off, even if Darkrai was Life Orb and took Recoil. The answer to both these questions was to lay in Toxic 
spikes. This hazard was absolutely lethal in the landscape of Gen 4 Ubers, as there were next to no absorbers to soak it up, and it hit a ton of top tier Pokemon, like Groudon, Kyogre, Wobbuffet, Palkia, Giratina, Garchomp, Darkrai, Mewtwo, and Deoxys Attack, as well as crippling one of the most popular non-Ubers in the tier, Blissey. Ariados' Focus Sash ensured it could get the hazard down against just about anything, since taunt attempts from Deoxys Speed would leave Deoxys hazardless. Against Darkrai in particular, Ariados being able to toxic spikes against it before breaking a potential Focus Sash was incredible, making it far easier for his teammates to deal with while supporting them with the ever-dangerous toxic spikes. Again, it was a small niche, but the fact remained that Ariados had a genuine niche in Ubers. Not even Sam Raimi could think of something that cool. The fourth generation finally gave Ariados some sort of win. The fifth generation teased Ariados by giving it X Scissor, which would have been really nice to have against Darkrai in the previous generation's Ubers. But what escalated this from harmless teasing to a cruel joke was the fact that Gen 5 also ripped any semblance of a niche away from Ariados. The fact that it couldn't hack it in Enu was to be expected, even without the utter dominance of Scolipede and Garbodor. However, with the newfound dominance of Rain Dish, Tentacruel, and Ubers, there was no reason to ever use Ariados anymore. It couldn't hope to match the defensive utility Tentacruel brought with its huge bulk, terrific recovery, and rapid spin. With X Scissor, Ariados now destroyed Darkrai, but beating Darkrai wasn't a big deal, as Tentacruel's obligatory partner Kyogre often used a specially defensive rest tail set. Thus, Ariados unceremoniously fell to untiered, unnoticed even by those who had previously used it to slay the alien and the nightmare alike, such as the cruelty of those who go unbuffed despite their need. The 6th generation was actually pretty nice to Ariados. It got a new entry hazard in Sticky Web, which was one of the most thematically fitting moveset additions of all time, as well as the zenith of bug moves, Megahorn. With these, as well as the addition of the newest low tier in PU, there was brief hope for Ariados. Surely it'd finally be able to eke out some sort of a niche, right? Right? Sadly, this wasn't the case. It was outclassed as a sticky web setter by Lee Vanny, the metagame's premier choice for the move thanks to its solid stats and move pull, and also by Smeargle and its limitless move pull. These Pokemon had much higher speed, making them far less susceptible to taunt, and Ariados' toxic spikes weren't enough to meaningly differentiate it from them. Too often, they would just get effortlessly vacuumed up by the popular Muck or Roselia. As a result of living in the shadows of the insect and the dog, the spider dropped to untiered once again. On the bright side, the idea of of a spider using Megahorn is basically the most terrifying thing ever, so there's that. The 7th generation finally gave Ariados a much needed stat buff. At long last, it was... Oh, never mind. All I got was plus 10 boost to its special defense. Going from base 60 to base 70. Not that this wasn't appreciated and all, but this was far from the immense statistical overhaul Ariados required to even approach viability, even all the way down in PU. There, it was completely and utterly outclassed in every conceivable way by Quillfish. Well, I guess if you really like the move Toxic Thread, Ariados could do that and Quillfish couldn't. However, if your goal was to win and you were given the choice between Toxic Thread and Quillfish, you took Quillfish every time. Alternatively, you could use Smeargle, which would allow you to have your cake and eat it too. Either way, you weren't using Ariados. It would have been good even if it wasn't so directly outclassed, so it at least wasn't teased with hope. It was the smallest of small wins that Ariados kept in mind while falling to untiered for the third consecutive generation in a row. And that's it! So how good was Ariados actually? Well, it is quite a unique case. Here we have a Pokemon that has never, ever been viable, even in the lowest tier. Except for Generation 4, where it managed to hang with the most dangerous Pokemon in the game, establishing a niche as being able to defeat the single most definitive lead in the tier, and crippling the metagame's titans with its signature toxic spikes. Besides that though, Ariados has been completely unusable, other than for style points. Game Freak will need to be a lot more generous with its buffs if this friendly neighborhood Sticky Weber is ever to see any sort of competitive success. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Ariados? How would you buff it? Because it needs lots and lots of buffs. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.